Hank, honey, are you in the bathroom? My voice echoed through the silent house as I dropped my suitcase by the door. What are you talking about, Sarah? I'm at the office. Hank's voice crackled through the phone. A shiver ran down my spine as the sound of running water and soft humming drifted from the upstairs bathroom. My heart pounded louder with each step I took towards the stairs. "'There's someone in our house, Hank,' I whispered, but the line had gone silent. I bit back a wave of panic. With each creak of the stairs, my breath quickened. I reached the bathroom door and hesitated, my hand trembling as it grabbed the knob. I decided against it. Instead, I stepped quietly away and dialed Hank again. The sound still carried from the bathroom, deep and serene, like someone leisurely enjoying their time. My mind raced, grappling with a thousand questions. Who could it be, and why here? I managed to slip downstairs without making any more noise, my legs feeling weak. I grabbed my purse and keys, glancing back once more toward the stairs. I hesitated, torn between leaving and confronting whatever was happening in my home. Finally, the fear won, and I bolted out the door, locking it behind me with trembling hands. Once in the car, I sat behind the wheel, my heart pounding. What if someone dangerous was inside? But the voice sounded calm, almost familiar, but not Hank's. I dialed Dana's number, fingers fumbling on the touchscreen. Hey, Sarah, what's up? Dana's voice brought an immediate sense of relief. Dana, I need to come over. Something is really wrong. Sure, come on over. What happened? Just, I'll explain when I get there. I pulled out of the driveway, my hands gripping the steering wheel so hard my knuckles turned white. The drive to Dana's felt like a blur, my mind looping back to that humming, the water running. None of it made any sense. As soon as Dana opened the door, the floodgates broke. I told her everything, from returning a day early to finding someone in the house. "'Are you sure it wasn't Hank?' Dana finally asked, a mixture of concern and confusion on her face. "'He said he was at work. Why would he lie about that? And the voice. It wasn't his, I'm certain. "'That's crazy, Sarah. What are you going to do?' I'm not sure, I admitted, feeling the uncertainty gnaw at me as I sank into Dana's couch, but I need to know what's going on. Dana placed a reassuring hand on my shoulder. You're not alone in this. We'll figure it out together. As that unsettling evening wore on, we brainstormed and speculated, yet no clear answers emerged. And in the silence, the echoes of that strange, serene humming haunted me, raising questions of trust and betrayal I never thought I'd need to face. Despite Dana's comforting presence, my mind kept returning to one thought. Who the hell was in my bathroom, and why? The next morning, I tried to bury my anxiety under a mountain of work. However, the memory of the previous night's events kept intruding. My nerves were on edge. At the office, I kept glancing at my phone, hoping for some sign that everything was normal. Hank, could you pick up some groceries on your way home? I texted him during lunch, hoping for a casual confirmation. Sure, no problem, he replied almost immediately. His response felt off, too easy, too perfect. I couldn't help but question everything now. Back at home, Hank was already unloading groceries when I arrived. Hey, got your message. What happened yesterday? You seemed pretty freaked out. I forced a smile. Just a bad day at work, you know, stress and all. Don't let it get to you, he said, patting my shoulder. We'll have dinner and relax tonight. I nodded, but my mind was racing. As the evening went on, I started noticing the little things, traces of another presence. My face cream, always precisely where I left it, seemed slightly moved. My toothbrush was damp, even though I hadn't used it yet. Hank, why does my face cream look like someone else has been using it? I asked, trying to sound casual. You're just imagining things, Sarah. You're stressed, he replied dismissively. Doubt crept further into my thoughts. I decided to take a closer look at his behavior. Over the next few days, subtle changes in the house became more apparent. Clothes folded differently, an extra wine glass in the dishwasher. Could I really be imagining it all? Hank, what are you doing tomorrow while I'm at work? I asked, trying to keep my voice light. Just working on a project. Nothing major, he replied, not even looking up from his laptop. Anyone coming over? I inquired, hoping to catch something in his response. Just some friends, you know. Brainstorming, he said, his tone casual but evasive. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. So I did what any rational person wouldn't. I started keeping track. I began jotting down every odd detail. 
every little thing that seemed out of place. My notepad quickly filled up with dates, times, and observations. I was gathering evidence for reasons I didn't want to fully admit yet. Through it all, Hank remained oblivious, or maybe he just didn't care. His dismissive attitude only fueled my determination. He would realize soon enough that I wasn't just being paranoid. Each day the tension grew. No longer could I ignore the signs. I was working towards the truth, one unexplained glass, one moved object at a time. I felt a strange mix of dread and resolve. The real test came when I decided to confront him directly about our relationship without revealing my suspicions. One evening, as we both sat down for dinner, I looked him straight in the eye. Hank, do you think everything's all right with us? His reaction was immediate, a flash of surprise, quickly masked by his usual cool demeanor. Of course, Sarah. Why wouldn't it be? I nodded, keeping my thoughts to myself. It was clear now. This wasn't just about minor house discrepancies. This was a betrayal that went beyond my imagination, and I was determined to uncover the whole truth. I sat across from Dana at our favorite cafe, stirring my coffee absently. You don't look good, Sarah. What's going on? Dana's concern was palpable. Hank, I think, no, I know something is seriously wrong. Things keep changing around the house. He's acting weird. Dana leaned in, eyebrows knit together. Like what? Little stuff. My face cream being used has extra wine glasses in the dishwasher, my toothbrush wet when I haven't used it. Dana sighed. Sarah, you need to be sure. Have you asked him directly? Maybe he has friends over and isn't telling me, but it feels off. Dana nodded, considering. Keep your eyes open. You know Hank. If it's something bad, it'll show. Back at home, I ramped up my vigilance. A sort of grim determination settled over me. I started keeping a detailed log, writing down every little thing that seemed off. Closets left ajar, furniture slightly shifted, my makeup drawer rearranged. Each discovery added fuel to the fire in my belly. Hank, have you been having anyone over while I'm away? I asked one evening, my voice steady. Just some friends. You're being paranoid, Sarah. Stop stressing out over nothing. His dismissive words, paired with a patronizing tone, made my blood boil. Friends, hun, they use my things? I shot back, unable to mask my skepticism. Sarah, get a grip. You're making something out of nothing. It's just stuff getting misplaced. Maybe you're losing it. I clenched my jaw and nodded, filing away another piece of his deceit in my mental ledger. Later, I found my favorite bracelet missing from its usual spot. It had been my grandmother's, and I never misplaced it. My heart sank. This wasn't just carelessness or imagination. Hank was lying. Talking to Dana helped cement my resolve. Keep a close eye on him, Sarah. Whatever's going on, you need real proof before you confront him. Over the next few days, more signs surfaced. Hank's sudden phone calls, always urgent and ending quickly when I walked into the room. His laptop, which he usually left open, now snapped shut each time I approached. I started going through his stuff when he wasn't home. It felt wrong, invasive, but necessary. One of his jackets turned up with a faint trace of perfume that wasn't mine. Heavier evidence. Marks of betrayal. Still, whenever I pressed him, Hank was swift to deflect. You're imagining things, he repeated, brushing aside my concerns with maddening ease. It only hardened my resolve. He had to be hiding something, or someone. I painstakingly documented every suspicious detail, every snatch of conversation, until the collected weight of it was undeniable. I wasn't losing my mind. Hank was losing my trust. By the time the next business trip rolled around, I had one last resort. Dana, I'm setting up cameras. I need to know. Dana's voice was firm. Do it. No more guesswork. You deserve the truth. With that decision, my focus shifted from uncertainty to action. My house was no longer a home. It was a crime scene, waiting to reveal Hank's betrayal. And when it did, I'd be ready. Setting up the hidden cameras felt strangely empowering. Dana was there helping me place them discreetly around the house. Each camera angle covered key areas, the living room, the kitchen, the hallway, and most importantly, our bedroom. This is going to show the truth, Sarah, handing me a camera. No more guessing, I nodded. I just need to know. The next business trip loomed closer. I packed my bags with deliberate calm, all the while feeling a coil of tension tighten within me. Before leaving, I casually mentioned it to Hank, masking my true intent. Leaving a day early, but back as usual. Shouldn't be a problem, right? Of course not, Hank said, barely looking up from his laptop. Have a good trip. 
Thanks, I replied, the word tasting bitter. From the hotel, I monitored the feeds obsessively. The first few days were uneventful, with Hank going about his usual routine, but then, on the fourth day, movement caught my eye. Hank entered the house, followed by a woman. My pulse quickened, anger and betrayal swelling within me. Dana was right. The guessing was over. Hank, you bastard, I muttered to myself, watching them closely. The woman, Liz, sauntered around the house like she belonged there. They laughed, cooked together, and I felt my stomach churn disappeared into our bedroom. It was also casual, their intimacy a blatant mockery of my trust. I called Dana. If this is what I think it is, I'm going to need your help. All of it. From beginning to end. We'll make sure they regret crossing you. Just say the word, Dana assured me. I hung up, fingers trembling. I watched the live feed as Hank and Liz lounged in my space, sharing kisses and whispered conversations. The anger seethed through me, but a fierce, cold determination took over. I spent the next hours capturing every moment on video, meticulously logging each betrayal. There was no denying it now. Hank's betrayal was real, and Liz was complicit. Hank's going to pay, I whispered to myself, closing the laptop. They both will. Two days later, I returned home earlier than planned. Dana by my side. We parked down the street, out of sight. My heart pounded as I watched the live feed from my phone, confirming their presence inside. Are you ready? Dana asked, eyes steely with resolve. Yes, this ends today. We moved quietly, inching closer to the front door. I took a deep breath and turned the handle, stepping into the entryway with deliberate calm. The muted sounds of laughter floated from upstairs, fueling my resolve. Dana and I crept up the stairs, each step a crescendo of their impending reckoning. Outside the bedroom door, I took a final breath and nodded to Dana. With a swift, decisive movement, I threw the door open. Hank! I shouted, voice cracking with the force of my rage. What the hell is going on here? Hank and Liz scrambled, sheets flying in a chaotic mess. The look on Hank's face twisted from shock to panic to an almost predictable guilt, while Liz tried to cover herself. My hands were steady as I pointed at them, phone recording every second. How long has this been going on? While I'm out working to build our future, you're here doing this? Hank stammered, trying to find words, but they caught in his throat. Liz looked terrified, realizing the gravity of the situation. The room fell into a tense, charged silence. The evidence was undeniable. The lies were exposed. There would be no more hiding, no more deceit. It was time for them both to face the consequences. Seeing Hank stutter and scramble for words filled me with a bitter satisfaction. I stood my ground, phone still recording, capturing every detail of his disgrace. Dana stood beside me, her presence a silent support. She crossed her arms, glaring at Hank and Liz. Well, this is cozy. Hank's face turned ashen. Sarah, this isn't what it looks like, I scoffed. Don't insult me, Hank, it's exactly what it looks like. Liz, clutching the sheets to her chest, finally found her voice, but it wavered. Sarah, I... Save it, Liz. I cut her off, cold steel in my voice. You made your choices. I turned to Dana, whose eyes burned with the same fire I felt. Can you go through his electronics? Let's make sure there's no evidence left to destroy. Dana nodded, moving swiftly to Hank's desk where his laptop and phone lay. Her efficiency only highlighted Hank's pathetic attempts at explaining himself. Sarah, please listen. It wasn't supposed to happen this way. What, getting caught? I spat back. Don't worry. I've been documenting everything, and it looks like today's show just completed my collection. Hank's eyes widened with realization. You've been spying on me? Funny how I'm the bad guy now, isn't it? I retorted. Dana tapped away on Hank's laptop, pausing occasionally to photograph messages and emails. Yep, everything's here. This wasn't a one-time thing, Sarah. Thank you, Dana, I said, turning back to Hank and Liz. This ends now. I took a step forward, pointing at Liz. Get out of my house. Now. Liz scrambled off the bed, gathering her clothes. She glanced at Hank, but he avoided her gaze, too ashamed to meet her eyes. I... I didn't mean for this to happen, she muttered, more to herself than anyone else. That makes two of us, I snapped, watching her fumble with her belongings. As she hurried out, Hank moved towards me, desperation in his eyes. Sarah, please, we can talk this out. Talk? You think talking's going to fix this? While I was out there working hard for our future, you were here, destroying it. Hank's shoulders slumped. I know I messed up. Messed up doesn't begin to cover it, I said, my voice rising. 
It's over, Hank. I've got all the proof I need. You're not just losing me. You're losing everything. Dana walked over, handing me Hank's phone. Here, take a look. It's worse than we thought. I scanned through the messages, my anger growing with each vile exchange. You and Liz thought you could just play house while I was gone? Well, playtime's over. Hank's attempts at damage control were pitiful. Sarah, I'm sorry. Sorry's not good enough. You'll hear from my lawyer, I said, turning my back to him. Don't bother trying to contact me. We're done. Leaving the bedroom, I felt an odd mix of rage and relief. As Dana and I walked out of the house, the weight of betrayal lifted, replaced by a fierce determination for justice. The road ahead wouldn't be easy, but I knew one thing for sure. Hank and Liz wouldn't escape the consequences of their actions. I replayed the moment in my head as Dana and I sat in her car outside my house. The image of Hank stammering, Liz scrambling, and their guilt was seared into my memory. My phone buzzed with notifications. Dana looked at me, concern etched on her face. You okay? She asked softly. I will be, I replied, stealing myself for the next steps. It's time for the confrontation. We drove to my parents' house where I'd planned how to reveal Hank's betrayal. My father, Timothy, greeted us at the door. His face hardened when he saw the expression on mine. Sarah, what happened? He asked. Let's go inside. I have something to show you all, I said, my voice steady. Inside, I connected my phone to the TV and began playing the recorded videos. My mother, Eleanor, gasped as she watched Hank and Liz. My God, Sarah, she murmured, shaking her head. Timothy's face was a mask of fury. That bastard, this will not stand. We need to make sure he faces the consequences, I said firmly. I want a divorce, and I want him to suffer for what he did, Timothy nodded. We have contacts. We'll make sure he doesn't come out of this unscathed. But are you sure this is the route you want to take? I'm more than sure, I said, feeling the weight of their support bolster me. The next morning, armed with my parents and Dana, I returned home. Hank was there, sitting in the living room, pale and apprehensive. Sarah, he started, but I cut him off. We need to talk, I said, setting the phone recording on the coffee table. As the video continued to play, Hank's eyes widened. He turned a shade paler. This isn't necessary, he tried, but his voice faltered. How long has this been going on, Hank? I demanded, voice cracking under the weight of emotion. While I'm out working to build our future, you're here doing this? Hank tried to fumble for excuses, but his words dissolved into stammers. His father, Robert, who had just arrived in support, looked at him, disgust etched into his features. This is unforgivable, son, Robert said, his voice clipped and cold. Liz walked in, trying to sneak past, but I stopped her with a glare. Liz, you're part of this, too. You don't get to just walk away. Hank finally found his voice, weak and desperate. Sarah, we can work this out. I'll do whatever it takes. You already had your chance, Hank. You chose to break this. Now live with the consequences, I said, my heart hardened by the evidence I'd gathered. As I confronted them, my father contacted the lawyer we'd prepared, John Thompson. He laid out the groundwork for what would come next. Legal battles, financial retribution, public shaming. Hank's life, as he knew it, was about to unravel. Sarah, please, Hank begged, his voice breaking. I made a mistake. Give me another chance. I shook my head, the weight of my resolve pressing down. No more chances. You've lost everything that mattered. John handed me the final papers. This will ensure you get what you deserve, Sarah, and he will face the justice he tried to escape. Hank looked defeated, his pleas falling silent. Liz, terrified of the repercussions, realized the gravity of her actions. And as I walked out of that house, the burden of betrayal lifted, replaced by the clarity of my decision. Justice wouldn't be swift, but it would be thorough. Hank and Liz had chosen their path, and now they'd face the consequences. I was ready to see it through, resolute and unyielding. The following weeks were a whirlwind. Legal documents, meetings with my lawyer, and difficult conversations became my new routine. Every step I took was deliberate, every move calculated to ensure that Hank and Liz couldn't escape the fallout of their betrayal. One afternoon, Dana and I sat in the lawyer's office, going over the final details. John Thompson, a sharp-eyed attorney with a no-nonsense demeanor, laid out the plan with practiced ease. We've documented everything thoroughly. With this evidence, we have a strong case for financial restitution and clear grounds for divorce. Hank's infidelity won't leave room for disputes. 
he assured me. Good, I replied, my voice steely. I want him to feel every consequence. Thompson gave a nod of agreement, pushing forward a stack of papers. These need your signatures. Once filed, Hank will be notified immediately. So I picked up the pen, the weight of my decision sinking in as I signed each document. Dana sat by my side, her presence a pillar of strength. After the meeting, Dana and I headed to a nearby cafe. As we waited for our drinks, my phone buzzed with a text from Hank. Please, Sarah, we need to talk. I showed Dana the message. He's desperate, she said. But don't forget what he did. I won't, I replied, deleting the message without responding. Two days later, Hank attempted to confront me at my office. I stood firm as he pleaded his case in the parking lot. Sarah, I'm begging you. We can work through this, he implored, his face a mask of desperation. I looked at him, my expression unwavering. You think you can get away with lying and cheating? Watch how I destroy everything you hold dear. Please, Sarah, I'll change. I'll do anything, he continued, his voice cracking. You should have thought about that before you betrayed me. This is your mess, Hank. Live with it. As Hank's world unraveled, so did Liz's. It turned out she was married, too, her husband blindsided by the affair. She reached out to me, but I ignored her attempts at contact. She deserved no sympathy. Within a month, Hank's professional world started to crumble. My documentation and public exposure of his affair tarnished his reputation. Freelancing contracts dried up and clients vanished. He called me repeatedly, but I never picked up. One evening Robert Hank's father called me. Sarah, I want you to know I support you. My son made his choices. He has to face the ramifications. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it, I said genuinely. Having his support meant a lot. Financially, Hank was sinking. John ensured my safety net was secure while Hank struggled to find stable work. I took control of our joint assets, leaving him scrambling. The public shaming was thorough. Hank's once polished image was now irrevocably smeared. Meanwhile, I began to rebuild. I focused on my career, surrounding myself with supportive friends and family. Each passing day, the weight of betrayal lessened, replaced by a sense of purpose and newfound strength. Dana stood with me every step of the way. One evening, as we sat on my porch with a bottle of wine, she raised her glass. To new beginnings and to you, Sarah, you've come a long way. To new beginnings, I echoed, clinking glasses with her. As I gazed at the night sky, a sense of closure settled in. Hank and Liz had tried to break me, but I emerged stronger, ready for a future that was now entirely my own. The legal battles finally concluded, and stepping out of the courthouse felt like shedding a heavy layer of skin. The divorce was finalized, assets were divided, and the truth was irrevocably documented. Dana and I met at our favorite cafe once more, where it all began. So, she said, stirring her coffee, how does it feel to be free? I took a deep breath. It feels liberating, but also a little scary. She squeezed my hand. You're going to do great. Time to focus on you. As the days passed, Hank's attempts to contact me dwindled. He called, left messages, even sent letters, but I remained resolute. One afternoon, as I was sorting through some old photos, my phone buzzed with an incoming call. Hello? I answered without checking. Sarah, it's Hank. Please don't hang up, I sighed. What do you want, Hank? I just... I'm sorry. Truly, I've lost everything. And you think I should care? He paused, the silence stretching. I know I don't deserve forgiveness, but I'm begging for a chance to make things right. I felt a pang of pity, but quickly pushed it aside. You're too late, Hank. This is the bed you made. Now lie in it. I hung up, blocking his number. No more interruptions from the past. With Hank out of my life, I focused on building a new one. My career flourished, thanks in part to the intense drive that the betrayal had ignited. I took on new projects, connected with more clients, and even got a promotion at work. One evening, Dana and I decided it was time for a celebratory getaway. We booked a trip to a cozy cabin in the mountains. Just you, me, and some wine, Dana declared as we packed our bags. The mountains were stunning, the air crisp and fresh. For the first time in months, I felt a sense of peace. As we sat by the fireplace one night, Dana raised her glass. To us. To new beginnings and leaving the past behind. To new beginnings, I echoed, feeling the warmth of the fire and the comfort of true friendship. Back home, my parents continued to be a rock for me. Timothy and Eleanor welcomed me with open arms every time I visited them. We talked about everything and nothing, reminiscing about happier times 
and looking forward to brighter days. At work, colleagues noticed the change in me. You've been killing it lately, Sarah, my boss remarked during a meeting. Keep it up. I nodded, feeling a newfound confidence. Thanks, I plan to. I wasn't actively seeking a new relationship, but I started being open to the idea. If someone worthy came along, I'd be ready. One evening, after a particularly rewarding day at work, I sat on my porch, the sky painted in hues of orange and pink. I realized I didn't need revenge anymore. I had my life back, and I had rebuilt it stronger than before. Dana joined me, handing me a glass of wine. To good riddance, and to deserving the best, she said, clinking her glass against mine. Good riddance to bad rubbish, I agreed. I deserve someone who brings out the best in me, not the worst. And with that, we toasted to the future, ready for whatever came next.